today's friend. Did you think this LED was getting a break today? Wrong. But we are going to do something different with it. We've got our lights turned on. So today we're going to use it alongside a temperature sensor so a different colored LED will turn on depending on what the temperature is. And you're going to like it. And no, this has nothing to do with me flailing for a sense of control over something because otherwise I have to contend with the fact that I'm lost in a drift in space. So don't even say it. Completely unrelated, but I may be getting low on breathable air. We're going to be using a temperature sensor that can either be purchased as a standalone sensor or come as part of a basic sensor kit. Earlier I had mentioned that part of my hindrance getting started with Arduino was all of these tutorials needing me to buy a lot of components that I didn't understand. So in order to continue keeping things simple and avoid me being a hypocrite, we're going to just focus on two starter kits for the time being. So far everything we've used is part of the basic starter kit. Now we're going to move on to a basic 37-in-1 sensor kit. This is the brand that I have, but there are a variety of other brands that have other 37-in-1 sensor kits. They all have most of, if not all, of the same sensors in them, so you can pick up pretty much any of these and it'll do the same job. We're going to focus on these two kits for the time being, just to continue keeping things as simple and easy to get started with as possible. There's a variety of temperature sensors with the Arduino, but these are the most common ones. The one we're using today is the LM35 and it's calibrated in centigrade or Celsius. Temperature sensors are a type of integrated circuit or IC. You may also hear them called chips or microchips. They serve as a fundamental building block for modern electronics. All the components of an IC are built on top of a wafer made of a semiconductive material, typically silicon, with a collection of thousands or millions or billions of electronic components like transistors, resistors, capacitors, diodes, and more, all packed onto a tiny disk. This is the little black chip that you can see on most circuit boards. A wafer is a piece of silicon or some other semiconductive material packed onto a very thin disk. They serve as a substrate for integrated circuits. Each component on the IC is tiny, usually even microscopic, and they're intricately weaved together along with a complex layering of wafers and copper. The wafer is cut or diced into many tiny pieces, each containing a copy of the circuit. These individual pieces are called a die. ICs are incredibly complex. The individual components are embedded into the silicon crystal instead of just mounted on top of it, and the wafer and copper layers are really thin and fragile. The IC die is far too small for anything to be connected or soldered onto it, which is why we package the die into a small black chip that's the basis for hundreds of electronic devices. The packaging cases the die and allows us to more easily connect it to devices. The pins on the outside connect to other parts of the circuit. All ICs are polarized and unique in their location and function. Most ICs use notches or dots so you can tell which one is first, and then the pins increase counterclockwise around the chip. This black box is the Arduino's IC package. Microcontrollers are a kind of integrated circuit, and when we call the Arduino a microcontroller, this is the specific part we're referring to. Let's first just read the raw data from the sensor and then print it out to the serial monitor. All we need is the sensor and three jumper wires. Before you actually hook anything up, here's a warning to avoid a mistake that I almost made so that you can avoid burning out your sensor. Your jumper wire placement is going to be dependent on the type of sensor that you have. If you have a standalone sensor, it's going to be different than this uh, sensor module that I'm going to be using. I was so accustomed to using the middle pin as the analog input pin that I just automatically put my jumper wire to the middle and then it got crazy hot, burned me. It was giving me readings that were like hundreds of degrees higher than the actual temperature. And when I looked up what the problem was, it said typically it's some kind of wire connection issue. So checked it again, found out on this module, that pin is very much not the middle. Make sure you place your jumper wires dependent on your sensor, not necessarily exactly what I'm doing.
In void setup, we're just starting the serial monitor. This first part of our void loop, we are we're creating three variables, all going to be floats because they're going to be decimal numbers. The sensor variable is reading in the data from pin A0 from the sensor. But the sensor, when it prints out onto the serial monitor, what it is outputting isn't just automatically Celsius, even though that's what this sensor is calibrated in. We have to actually code that to make it something that we can read. What the sensor would print out on its own is actually going to be in millivolts. Temp C, the number that we're dividing by, comes from a really specific calculation. So what is happening there? The analog pin can measure up to 5 volts and the analog pin resolution is 1023. So 5 volts equals 1023. I went on about this for a while in the potentiometer video. The LM35's max output voltage is 1500 millivolts, which is 150 degrees Celsius. A millivolt is equal to one thousandths of a volt, so the maximum output for this sensor is 1500 divided by a thousand, so 1.5 voltage. So 1.5 max volts that this sensor can put out divided by 5 max analog input times 1023 of the max resolution of the Arduino is 307. So at 5V, resolution is 1023 because Arduino is a 10-bit ADC. And at 1.5 volts, which is what the sensor itself can put out, the resolution is 307. So next you divide 307 divided by 150. 150 being that maximum Celsius number. So if the analog pin reads 2.0466, that's equal to one degree change in Celsius. So to convert the raw sensor data to a readable Celsius temperature, we need to divide the raw input data by 2.0466. Then to convert that to Fahrenheit, easy formula to look up, we need to do the Celsius temperature times 9 divided by 5 and then add 32. After we've got those formulas, we can print our data out. So we're going to print the raw data straight from the sensor so you can see what that looks like. And then the Celsius temperature and then the Fahrenheit temperature, we're going to delay all of that by 1000 milliseconds or one second. And we're using print line to make sure that the sensor, the Celsius, and the Fahrenheit all print out on different lines. So let's hook up the Arduino, upload it, see what happens. And then if your serial monitor doesn't immediately open, either go to Tool Serial Monitor or do Control Shift M like I'm doing. Mine doesn't automatically open, I don't know why. If you have suggestions for how to fix that, please let me know. So now we're printing out the temperature straight from the sensor in Celsius and then in Fahrenheit. I don't think it's actually 82 degrees in here, so uh, I don't think that something about this sensor is completely accurate, but I feel like that's a sensor problem, not a me problem. In this one case, wait a minute, I have an entire spaceship to fix. I don't have time to read the data to know what the temperature is. Let's hook up some LEDs so we can just gauge it by color. We're going to need three 220 ohm resistors, three LEDs, the sensor, and 11 jumper wires. I'm using six long wires and five short wires to make things easier, but any size you choose is going to be fine. Choose three different LED colors. I'm going to be using blue, red, and yellow. Just a reminder about these jumper wires, the colors don't actually affect anything. I'm just using the colors that I have, but anything that you use is going to work just fine. First, add the sensor on one side of the board and three LEDs on the opposite side of the middle group. Connect a resistor with one leg on each side of the group in line with the longer LED leg. Next, add a jumper wire in line with the shorter LED leg directly beside each resistor. Stretch that across to the minus or ground side of the power rail. I have a caveat to something I've said before. Since there are no active components inside the breadboard, the positive and the minus signs don't inherently affect anything. However, we do decide which one is positive and negative based on how we connect things from the power rail to the Arduino. I use the long wire to connect to 5V, on the board and the long yellow wire to connect to ground. Therefore, we need to line up these LED wires to match that, so put them to the minus sign. Connect the VCC pin on the sensor to the positive power rail and the ground to the negative side. VCC is the power input of the device. You might hear people say VCC and 5V used interchangeably in respect to the Arduino. Connect the sensor pin to A2. Connect a wire in front of each resistor leg to pins 2, 3, and 4. Finally, connect the ground wire on the power rail to ground on the board and the VCC wire to 5V. 
First step, setting our hot and cold variables. I'm a pretty whiny person about the heat. Too hot for me if it's over 76, so that's what I'm setting my hot variable to. And it is too cold if it's under 70 because I'm also an abnormally cold person. So I'm setting my comfortable temperature range to be between 70 and 76. You can set it to whatever is comfortable for you. In our board setup, we're setting our pin modes. A2 is reading the input from the sensor, and then 2, 3, and 4, those are all connected to our LEDs. So depending on what we're reading in from the sensor, one of the LEDs is going to light up. Then we're just starting our serial monitor. Come on, handsome. I didn't tell you, but I found this space dog on the ship. So next for our if statement. The first thing we're doing is checking if the temperature is too cold. So for me, under 70 degrees. On the board, we've got one LED connected to two, the next to three, the next to four. So what I want to happen is if it's too cold, the LED connected to pin two is gonna turn on and then it's gonna print out my opinion of the temperature. If that isn't true, we're going to jump to the next part of the if statement. If the temperature is greater or equal than our hot variable, or 76 for me, then we're going to keep pins 2 and 3 off, but we're going to turn pin 4 on. And of course, it will print out my opinion. Finally, if neither of those things are true, we're going to write to the middle LED. We're going to tell only that one to turn on, and then finally print my opinion. And then we're going to delay each of those by half of a second. So let's hook it up and see if it works. My red LED just came on. And my serial monitor is telling me how burning alive I am. Great news! Again, we don't think it's 82 degrees in here. But it's doing what we told it to. Oh, if I touch the sensor, it briefly becomes a fine temperature. How do we make it different temperatures so that we can test it? I'm just going to do the lazy way and change my variables. So if it's less than 83, we're going to turn the blue light on. Upload that. Blue light turns on. Oh no. Maybe I can warm it up. Now we're going between 32 and uh, 123 when I touch it. And back and forth from, from red to blue. So when I said earlier that I think I almost fried my sensor because of the wiring mistake I made, I think the truth is that I completely fried my sensor. Oh, or it's 246 degrees in here. One of those things is true. Well, Lesson learned about frying your sensors, make sure you always connect your jumper wires to the right place. Either that or my reactor is starting to blow, and if that's the case, I gotta go fix something that's way above my skill level.